for March 28th on Monday. This will be, I think, our first televised meeting of our Finance Committee, so welcome viewing audience. Uh, minutes of the past meeting. Any changes or additions? No, I'll move for their approval. Is there a second? Second. All in Aye. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Good evening. Claims. Has everyone had a chance to view them online and then we, we signed off on them earlier? Any questions on there? Move for approval. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Roll Aye. Call. Oh, roll call, excuse me. Marcet? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Bernard? Yes. Virtual? Yes. Application for um, operator's license. I'll read them off. Lauren Graff, Paige Hansen, Timothy Johnson, Samantha Nerby, Shane Olson, Stacy Pleto, Brooke uh, Rosenboom, uh, Blackwood Samuels, and Karis Steinberg. Steinberg, probably. Nancy, do you have anything on any of those? Everybody, uh, everything okay? All okay with the chief, all okay with Nancy. Anybody have any questions? Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item four, application of the Hudson Daybreak Rotary Club for a temporary class B retailer's license for the district rotary event on 623 from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Phipps Center for the Arts, 109 Locust Street. Nancy, do you have anything on that? wasn't in the packet was the bylaws and they provided a copy of their bylaws so it seems to me that they're a bona fide club and their representatives here in the audience if you have any questions about the specific uh, event anyone have any questions no, I'll move for approval. is there a second second any other discussion uh, do we want to allow them to speak on the event if they'd like to since they're here anybody want to speak if you have anything to add Mr. Whitcomb, do you have anything to add on the uh, event you're having? Okay. No questions. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, number five, consider funding for handrail on north side of Vine Street between 2nd and the library. Um, Mr. Uh, Zuli, I believe this has been to finance. Was this recommended at Public Works? This was recommended um, from the Public Safety Committee. They actually started off there. Okay. All right. Has it been to Public Works? Mm -hmm. We passed it on to Public Safety. Okay. And Public Safety has recommended approval on this. Any discussion on this? Lori? Well. <laughs> Well, I, I just I asked Tom if there had been issues this winter. We had probably one of the snowiest winters we've had in quite a while, and um, there there weren't any complaints. Um, I think they did a great job keeping the sidewalk cleared and you know salted. As I'm comparing this item to other similarly priced items in our budget, I'm not seeing, I guess the the need for it at this point. Okay. From a public safety perspective, when you walk down that piece of that stretch, and if you go across the street where they already have a railing, I know that I've received some concerns that it's it could be an issue. And, it would, and you're right; if they get out there right away and they sand it, um, it's but it's still steep enough that people are concerned. So that's why I came through public safety to look at, and why we said, you know, I. I'd like to hear from Randy here, but I think also that we have a concern that there is a potential risk to our citizens walking up and down that street. And we hope it gets a lot of business. Yeah, I think you said it, summed it up exactly what public safety said. Yeah, you know, the, the whole question is, is this affordable at this point in time? The other, the other side of the street, though, I don't believe is a handrail, more of a, a barrier from falling into the between the building and the street there? I don't yeah, think it's necessarily I've seen it kind of used as both, yeah. yeah. But I guess that's the pleasure of this committee. I, I see in our, our budget we had it for $5,000, so. Yeah, and we and if we put in half of it, the, the steepest section of it, we felt we, you know, it didn't make any sense or it was seemed to be quite overpriced at ten grand. That just seems like a huge number. Even five seems big, but we did have it in the budget. Okay. 
You know, we the city put that sidewalk in mm -hmm. when the the library moved down there, when the police department moved down there. Um, you know, it just seems like we're incurring some additional costs that really are a result of the library being there. It's a joint library. I don't know. I, I think it. I guess I'd be more concerned if we'd had issues this winter. It was a pretty severe winter. Um, I. I guess I will be voting against it at this point because, like I said, I'm comparing it to other items on our budget, and I'll I move. I'll move to deny this. That's it. Okay. Anybody want to second that? I'll second. All right. Any other discussion? I just want to have a caveat on that: that we make sure we monitor the okay. situation as it goes, and as things may arise, we may have to revisit it. I agree. And I understand the budget perspective, but this is also a city sidewalk. And it's our responsibility to make sure it stays safe. You bet. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion to deny? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. To deny funding of that. We have a review proposed sandbag policy fees and costs. <clears throat> Eric, are you going to be the gentleman that's going to talk about that, or am I? I think you're very good at it. <laughs> Uh, just when the projections of the flooding came about earlier, um, the, we knew this year that more than likely we're going to have to sandbag some areas. And uh, the question came up is whether does the city provide them, you know, so in the process of trying to figure something out so we could get the ball rolling, I did some research. There wasn't a lot out there um, as far as different cities, the most... I could find was a place in Washington. Bayport Stillwater really doesn't have a policy. I don't uh, know what they have. So, it, in because of the flooding that is in uh, the Hudson area, that is very localized, just a few areas that we just wanted to find out a little bit before we started ba bagging the policy. So we came up with that the best that we could find is covered the cost. Uh, the the policies that I did find. Uh, stated that sandbags kept with the city will be used for city property at first and then any left over will be made available to citizens and or businesses that require such and uh, at, at cost so that's where we're at so i had to kind of draft something up fairly quick catherine looked at it prior to going out and uh, we purposely stated guidelines until some type of formal policy could be adopted through the city and when you say cost i think what we're talking about is raw material the sand and the bags uh, moving the uh right. from the standpoint of transporting and coordinating the volunteer we're not charging for that right so. we are just initially looking at the cost per bag so. yep and the sand if we had it delivered yeah i think there was some but nothing was ever really yep. drafted so in depth so. So correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, but under priorities, uh, one, two, and three, number two, there is a cost associated with it yeah. as well. Okay. So yeah, it was kind of a cost those. associated with the bag, sand, and materials. I because th there's sometimes dikes are the are they use uh, the Jersey barriers or the concrete barriers. So, right. you know, it's just whatever we can get our at our disposal through emergency government and that. But my point is, we didn't include cost under item number two. We only did on number three. As far as the sandbags and the sand and that, yeah, I think we just had left it that, that whatever the policy was there. So, with, well, because we only had a, there's two things. of them here. Yeah, we got two policies, two guidelines. Which one is the one they should be looking? I at? have to look at. I didn't bring it. We had the uh, the first one that we put together was kind of a, a draft, a, a draft, and we called it a guideline. So we didn't have a policy. This, we thought we should come to you to the council before we. Did a policy, so we did a guideline. Okay. Right. Okay. This policy came out of public safety. And, in, and yep. this is the final one then, the okay. one on the front to back. That's what you have. Yes. So here's my question specifically. Okay. So the first priority is going to be public property. Second priority is going to be private property within the city of Hudson. Right. And the third priority is private property outside of the corporate limits of Hudson. Correct? If it should come to that. Yeah. Okay. And so my question is this, are we charging for category number two or As a just current, category number three? We're supposed to be for category two, so that should okay. be included in it. Okay. included, yep. 
And what was, didn't I hear, I had heard it was, there's what, 25 cents different. a bag? It doesn't say here. You've got the one in your hand. Is yeah, there's the two one. It says there's the one uh, that came from public safety, hmm. which is completely different than the other one that yeah. you have in your packet. So there's, we need to okay. know which one. One from public safety was drafted by me. Okay. Out of the city of Ferndale. Okay. And I, we changed it to Max Hudson's criteria. Okay. I don't know where the one that, okay. well, I, just, I don't know where that came. I know. Just so we're talking about the right, which one we're supposed to be looking at here. So. Well, good, to, good to all vote on the same That's a question. Thing, yeah. What's, that would one? be a good idea. As far as I know, the only one that I gave to Jan. Which is which one? Guidelines. Guidelines. What do you both think? Okay. Guidelines would be the one I gave, Jane. Not the one that says policy and procedure. Right. right. All right. Okay, so that would be the front to back single page. Yep. Yeah. The other one came from public safety, right. right, Randy? Yep. Okay. So you're looking at adopting that one you have. Correct. The guidelines. Whatever which one you guys want to get. I, we just needed to get something in place. So I think the biggest it, question was cost. See, if you look on that one, Laurie, it says sandbags will be sold to citizens right. at city's cost per bag. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would suggest that two and three are both. Okay. I just want to make sure yep. we were all on the same. I, I, I didn't know there was two out okay. there. So. Jan, let's put the old one in as well. What's the difference between the two of them? The way they're laid out and, you know. Which one, uh, which one are we going to accomplish by what? So today we're want? looking to pass to approve the guidelines. The guidelines. The guidelines. And then it's yeah, on, I think they're almost identical. Yeah. And then it looks like we should actually spend more time working on the policies and procedures. I think this replaces this, Lee. Mm -hmm. Which one replaces? The one that guidelines. says guidelines replaces what Re came from public safety. Okay. Right. We tried to make it as to make it as short and sweet as possible without trying to clutter it up too much. Okay. So basically what we're saying is the city will deliver sand? As of now, yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And residents need to purchase the sandbags? Yep. Okay. And this year's cost was 25 cents a bag, right? Correct. That's what we got ours at, yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments on it? I would move that we approve the City of Hudson sandbag guidelines. As policy? Well, or that we recommend it to council, I guess. Okay. For as a guideline. Discussion right. Do we want to call it a policy? I think we want to try and get it as a policy. I think you need to put it in policy for, form, though, right. to make it a policy. This is, is this enough? I would think so. Okay. Yeah. So I guess my motion would be that we recommend its approval to full okay. council. Any other? Is there a second? I'll second it. Oh, I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other discussions? Randy, you have anything on it? No. Lee? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Eric, can I get that copy back? No. No, that's... That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Uh, okay, yeah. Or make a copy for yourself. Mr. Willie, consider a second amend to our 2010 budget. In November, there was the first round of budget amendments. This is just kind of a cleanup to um, recognize revenue and expenditures that changed since November. Um, this will clean up for 2011, or 2010, I'm sorry, prior to audit, so we give this to the auditor. Um, there was no, the expenditures and revenue increased by the same amount, so there's no impact on the tax rate. Okay. So it's just a cleanup item, okay. but we have to get approval by the council, and then it'll be published once in the paper to make it official. Anybody have any comments or questions on that? It's more of a bookkeeping. Right, and we did move money from contingency, which is why we put it in there for fuel and um, electricity and that type of thing, because towards the end of the year, our fuel costs did go up as the gas prices went up. So that's where the big transfer was, was between contingency and to the fuel accounts. Okay. I'll move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Is there any other discussion on this item? What was the, we we're talking about the increase in fuel costs. So we underestimated by what percent? I think the total increase in fuel was 70,000. I'd have to look what the total budget was. I can get that to you, Lee. I don't have that in front yeah, of me. Because I remember, uh, uh, was it last year or the year before, we set out a bid so that it wouldn't go up in price? No, it doesn't. It, we're, we're guaranteed a margin. Mm -hmm. It isn't that it doesn't go up in price. We're guaranteed so much over their cost. Over their cost, that's right. right. So it, it fluctuates right. with, but we're not subject to the market then. I'm, I'm just surprised that, well, 
I guess I'm not surprised that everybody is seeing that increase. That and salt are the two items that from year to year we can never tell what we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. so what does it leave our contingency at now? Well, this would be for 2010. Um, I believe there's still about $30,000 in there, but again, I'd have to look. I can let you know that. I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 8, consider seeking proposals for urban forestry management plan, EAB readiness plan, tree inventory and software, and determining and for us to determine funding. Uh, Tom, you want to update us on this? I think everybody's got all the uh, issue sheets there. Um, this will be the third year that we, uh, the city has applied for our urban forestry grant. Um, the first year we got $5,000. Uh, second year was about $8,700. This year we applied um, for uh, monies to put toward a management plan, urban forestry management plan, tree inventory, and emerald ash borer readiness plan. Uh, the grant is a 50% matching grant. Uh, we estimated the cost for all plans and software and uh, tree inventory to be around $30,000. Um, we went a little higher in case it was, we didn't know if we'd get the full amount from the DNR or not, but we did get um, actually 35000 or 17500 So we can match that. I don't expect that number to be that high, um, just depending on the cost of the, the services. Um, but I just want to emphasize that uh, the forestry program in the city is a vital part of our community. Um, there's many benefits, uh, economic, um, social, um, natural beauty. It helps environment. Trees clean the air of pollutants, adds oxygen. Um, trees add value to our homes. I think it's something that the whole city would benefit from. Uh, the other thing that we have to, another important factor is that um, with the trees, we still have a liability to maintain those trees. And with this survey, we can determine how many risk trees we have. And once this policy is, or the tree inventory is taken, and we have uh, you know, all, everything documented that we can plan and for the future, we can have a five-year, maybe a 10-year plan if that's what it takes to have you know, trees planted, uh, cared for, and the risk trees removed. I think for liability purposes that if we have something in place, if something happens, we can say that we're, we're aware of them, we have a plan in place, and that um, we're working on it on a five or 10 year plan, whatever. So I think we're proactive in that respect. Um, I think we're very fortunate to get that amount of money. A lot of communities applied and and didn't receive anything. So um, I hope you consider that we go forward with this. When you said liability issues, are you talking about trees that actually fail and fall? Uh, yes, boulevard trees that would be, you know, the city's responsibility, trees that are hollow in the middle or whatever. And, you know, that the inventory should um, determine that. That's part of the criteria for the inventory is that Every tree has an ID number, a location number, uh, and a rating. So they'll know if they're a bad tree or not a good tree. You know, they'll have different rating systems. Liability in the sense we have to take it down. Mm -hmm. So is, Tom, is it, you're going to find 17.5 from your operating budget? No. Well, that was the problem. <laughs> uh, we no, had it in the he came to us to ask for that. <laughs> We had it in the operating budget because of the zero increase. Uh, we didn't have enough funds in there, so uh, we asked to put it in uh, short-term capital bonding, and, and I'm not sure exactly where it went from there. Maybe Devin can help us it, there. It was the committee at that time said, if they get it, then we'll address it at that time. It was not right. included in the short term. Mm -hmm. that was we don't know if we had this, this or not, do we? The grant we do have. For 17.5? Yes, absolutely. Or 35. Mm -hmm. 17,500 is matching. what we have. I don't expect uh, our portion to be that high, uh, you know, just depending on what the cost come in, comes in at. Oh, okay, the okay. The other thing that we gotcha. can deduct and use for our part of that monies are 
time that I spent preparing the RFP and any of Debbie's time and if we have any volunteers or you know our labor that way so we can take some of the cost from our portion through our labor costs. Is it a one for one? Yes. So for every dollar we spend they give us a dollar. Correct. How much of this could come out of the park funds? I would assume some of the trees that were inventory are in our parks. That's be specific. Impact fees. Doesn't it? It has to be specific, a trust A, trust B. Right, well, we've got parks on the front, the north and south. Parks on both sides. Yeah, I'm just... The question is whether or not impact, I would have to check whether impact fees can be used for non-tangible items. So I'm thinking if it can be used for at least part of this, we're knocking down the mm -hmm. overall cost. But I, I think impact fees have to be used for something, a thing, like roadways and... You know, it can't be used for a, a plan. Right. I'm wondering, can we address this after we get bids back, quotes back, Absolutely. and we see what the cost yeah. really is? But I just you know, tonight I'm looking for uh, permission to put, you know, send out the RFPs. What it, what's your what's your pleasure, council uh, committee? I think it's a good. I think it's something we should do, and we need to try and find the money for it. Um, where that's going to come from, I think we have to uh, talk about that. <coughs> Would there, this be an opportunity for, I was thinking, some private private investment, some private groups to come through and and support this kind of activity? Possible. But again, I don't know what the grant money would have to be expended we, through the you city. Can, you can yeah. accept donations. Okay, and you, is that in kind then? Okay. So that might be maybe an opportunity here. I guess I'll, I'll one more time. What's your thoughts? Whether you want to continue to recommend the, this to council that we uh, we're going to have to find a place. I'll make a motion that we go out for RFP and like uh, was recommended here, and that we find out how much it'll cost. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Now we get to the fun part: capital budgets, 2011-2012. Everyone has got has received their sheet. Um, this does the layout make sense? Did I say, okay. This is the uh, combined efforts of Mr. Willie and myself, public safety, uh, parks, and public works. Um, there's always some that I think some people will say I don't think we should spend it there. We should do it here. But anybody, anything jump out at you? Um, the handrail there is for 5,000. That was something that, that uh, was on here that. Uh, so we already saved five grand? Well, it was <laughs> this committee, it was a, what, a, what was the vote on it? Was it uh, deny? Yep. It still goes to council. That's though. correct, with, no, with a deny recommendation. Well, I have a couple if you want to sure. go down the line, but. Sure, <clears throat> absolutely, that's what we're here for. You know, I'm looking under general parks, the tables, the benches, the grills, the playground equipment, zone edging, playground equipment addition updates. Um, those in particular, those three, is that a want or a need at this point in time? Water fountains, general parks. Water fountains at one time were talked about being put in by the water utility. If that's something they want, they should take it up with water utility. I agree with the keyless entry. I think that would save them a lot of time and cost. I don't believe the boat launch needs 10 grand in repaving, nor do I believe that the beach house needs that at 10 grand. Just I those would be coming from others, wouldn't that, be coming from the, Okay. so the, you know that. Those I, mean, are not the, the, I see the other source, but right. I'm just going through what I've highlighted with questions. Okay, that would probably come out of the parking fund, would that be correct? Correct. Okay. And or, and the Burton Field bleachers, I believe, would come out of the um, park fund. Oh. I'd like to ask Tom what on the lakefront the walking trail improvements was and if that was for security reasons or is that something else? That's the washout that continues, I believe, the yeah. washout that continues. They pushed off, they had approved we've, it last year and then they put it off. I think we've put it off about three years in a row, haven't we? Yeah, it's, a, it's the area from uh, on the west side of the swimming beach, that trail there, it keeps breaking off, washing out and um, every time we get a rain, it just washes out the trail, or the Asphalt gets broken every time, and we have to keep bringing the sand back. So okay. it is kind of a safety issue, and it's a, a big maintenance problem. Okay, 50000 in White Camp Park, uh, phase one of the trails. Is that a want or a need at this point in time? 
That's coming from. Well, it's coming. It would come out of the park trust funds. Trust, yeah. It's fine, but you know, you use it or lose it, or do we need to spend the money? That's okay, this cuff came from the park board, so I don't have the answer to well, that. Well, no, it didn't come from the park board. It well, from the park chairman. That could be yes. I don't have the answer to that. Right I mean, these are just questions that I, you know, I want to see answered before we approve it, because as you all aware, are aware of the costs that we're uh, incurring moving forward. Hair dryers for the city hall. It's not I don't hair, know. Uh, hand dryers. Hand, hand dryers. dryers. The thought hair behind dryers. that is for all this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use them. <laughs> no. The thought all, behind that. Uh, all was, the restrooms in the city to get rid of to get rid of the paper. City hall or the entire. Everywhere. Yes. And get rid of the paper. Because well, we're how spending. How much do we spend on paper? Oh gosh, thousands of dollars a year. Or ten grand? Probably not. Probably, well, close. Close for I you. I bet we do because of all the parks and the waste and you know, pulling out a hundred paper towels at a time and we spend a lot on paper products. Okay, and I'm on the second page for my questions. River Rock Colgate Shelter. I know the park board is pushing. Nothing's been uh, set there. Uh, perceptions reality at this point in time. I find it very hard to support. A shelter at the end of the dike when there are roads falling apart and other things that need to be addressed in this community before we do that and then a, a plow equipment could you explain what that is for 13,000 um, update <clears throat> yeah um, we'd like to take some equipment one of our trucks and uh, we it's more efficient if we have uh, wings and um, to add the plow you know the plows so one of the trucks wanted to add a pre-wet system uh, that's for you know adding the uh, salt brine to the salt so we can get by with less salt so that's sure. kind of a saving there the other thing is a time factor when we add a wing on our plow it's like having two plows on one truck so okay. we can you know and one so that's what we wanted to do is just to upgrade one more truck to, to add a wing and a pre-wet system there okay one last question on the police squad vehicles for next year chief Jensen is it your intention to have uh, two new squads or in-car video cameras or any other future uh, updated equipment for technology that you may need? Well, our hope is to have two new um, squad cars added. The problem is, is we don't know what the price is going to be. Right, and we just bought you two new ones this year. Yeah, so that 60000 in there is what you've already spent. I'm looking at 2012, 75000 right. Correct. We've been, we've been told anywhere between 23000 to $28,000, depending on what options you get with the vehicle. But well, we won't know that till sometime around June about what the costs are going to be. So I went towards the high end to make sure we could cover the cost and for outfitting the new cars that are coming out. I, I would say one or the other. I mean, you want other uh, new updated technology, equipment, computers, right. video camera surveillance, but, no, right. but you can't have both. Well, that's up to you, Randy. That's your decision. I'm just giving you what I'm requesting. Okay. Just, just as a note, and I think I mentioned it, for 2012, you don't, this is just kind of a guideline. Because they're notes, not bonds. You're not set in stone. Okay. So this was just kind of a preliminary thing okay. for 2012. And as the 2012 budget, this can be, and even 2011 could be changed. But no, I get that. It's just that we got to look harder at wants and needs. Okay, can I address some of the? I think the issue that we'll, let, first thing I'd like to talk about is Lakefront Park, the Riverwalk Tollgate Shelter. We have a grant for $100,000 that we receive from the DNR. And the issue comes in is we, if we spend a hundred, another hundred thousand dollars, and we match it and spend a total of two hundred, whether that makes sense or not, and I think that's the question that the council needs to answer. Uh, if we don't want to, let's let's be done with it, and and we won't uh, we don't need to talk about it anymore. We don't, but we have a hundred thousand dollars that was extended again for another year, and whether or not we think it's I know the, and I I know that uh, I assume this came from the park board, Randy. Uh, I'm curious why that's not the um, the fifty thousand. I assume that we're talking about spending half the grant, and and getting matching for half the grant here since early. Well, no, I think two years. it's a two-year project. Oh, there's we're a second year. Oh, yeah. And, and then, the um, so and why is that not coming out of other sources? Why is it coming? The other out sources of, is in the second year. If you go to 2012, and we don't have it fifty, we could spend this year out of other sources. No. Well, I think Tom can answer that. Tom, we never talked about another design or a different design. Nothing was approved in Park Board for design on the end of the shell uh, on the end of the dike for a shelter. Nothing was approved and passed up the line. 
At one time, Bonestro did have a design for the toll gate shelter, and that was with, uh, that's when everything got pretty expensive with the uh, addition of water and sewer out to the end of the dike. So there is a design that was actually bid out. I think the bids came in at uh, 205 or $207,000 at that time, and then the council decided not to proceed with that project. Is that um, the one where we had the water out there running yeah, water yes. and everything? It had to be more than that, Tom. We're up to the I was going to say it was over 500,000. Yeah. Right. That, that was just a shelter. The shelter was right. about 200. But once everyone, it kept getting added on to and added yep. on to. Right. My so I guess the, the, you know, I can see the concern about if we don't do something with it, we, have, we should choose to let it go and do mm -hmm. something. Exactly. And uh, we had it extended. We uh, invest or we lose the four, 100 grand. Four times I think we've extended decision? it. Yep. So this is it, folks. If you, if you don't think it's necessary and don't want to spend the money, uh, we'll let the $100,000 go and let's move on. We, don't, we have to decide tonight. I mean, we've been talking about this. We've got to get our capital budget done tonight because we yeah. yeah. One of the early designs was nothing more than just a picnic shelter. It was an open air picnic area. And I would assume they'll let us spend less than $100,000. They'll match up to whatever we spend. The problem is that, it, <laughs> is that we submitted or the city submitted a plan to the DNR and that's what we have to go, that's what they approved the grant for was that design and that building. Um, actually the original building was uh, a, a, like a restroom with a holding tank mm -hmm. and then the city added on to that but the original one I believe was like a holding tank where you didn't have any water sewer it was just like a state park mm -hmm. restroom. I did t talk to Bonestro and see what it would take to change the revise the um, current plans um, and it would I guess that'd be an additional fourteen thousand dollars to revise the plans that we do have right now to a holding tank instead of the flush toilets and water and everything like that. But you said we had a design that we sent to the DNR originally, so we could just use that one. We'll have to check, I guess. Uh, all right. Here's my problem with it is I don't think any of us know what we're, we don't have a design in front of us that we're even agreeing upon. And I'm not faulting anyone, but I'm saying why would we approve money for something that's, uh, you know, somewhat nebulous at this point. So I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it. Okay. If we, I guess the decision point is if we cut it out of the budget, we need to let that money go. Let it yeah, go that's fine, state. but we don't even know what we're cutting out. I mean, but if, if we leave it in here as a line item, we, there's no reason that we can't reallocate it later in the year when we chose not to do something. I think that's Devin's point is that we're laying out a framework here. We're not committing to these things. Well, then I hope that's the case. But 2011 that. needs to be a little more firmed up because mm -hmm. if Tom's going to start going out, for example, Bids. for the crack seal and the mill and overlay and all that, you know, he needs to know what numbers he's working with so he knows how much street work he can do. I don't think he could get any resistance there. Right. I'm just saying, though, 2011 needs, not that it has to be absolutely firm, because last year you changed for those street construction projects. You added some money and took it from somewhere else when you did. Mm -hmm. You shifted it around. But with regard to the toll gate shelter, we are saying it's <laughs> we're bonding for it and it's Correct. for 2011. Right. I have the same concern about the Burton Field design and reconstruction. Okay. I mean, if we're approving design fees for this year, that's fine. And it looks like it's not coming out of the bonding, but um, it should just be clear that we're not necessarily approving that entire amount for 2012. We've not seen anything. Right. My assumption tonight would be that you would approve the 2011 capital budget. The 2012 was kind of on there. So if it was a project going over two years, yeah. you could see how it would. I just so, don't so want there to be any assumption that right. because the dollars are here that it's been approved for next year. One of the things on that particular sure. project, Lori, is the 15 grand, and we're taking that out of park fees that's for reconstruction or for uh, design. Right. So we can figure out what we're going to do. And then we'll go out and get our bids and see if it if it's going to work. And if it doesn't, it doesn't work. It'd Simple. be no different than with uh, Second and Vine. You know, that was in the budget all along, and then it was yep. just decided not to do it. Okay, so the 50000 getting back to the Riverwalk toll okay. gate shelter, is that for design, or what that is that 50000 for this year? That was to, to start, start the project. And we haven't, one of the things I guess we would want to do, Tom, is go out and get a bid on what we've, you don't, do we have that upstairs? Do we have a copy of, of the uh, design? Sure. 
you know. Should I get that for the council? I can get copies or? I think that would be important. You've never seen it, have you? No. Okay. I've been okay. here three years. Yep, sorry. It's That's okay. all right. I just. I, um, Is there anything else yes. on this? Yeah. Yes. Okay, shoot. All right. Um, as we're looking at wants versus needs, uh -huh. as I thought, as my council okay, so that that assistant <laughs> for our council members out here, um, the I think uh, I'm looking at the key list entry saying, oh, that's convenient. It would be nice, but what is it that we're spending? What what money are we going to save by spending 14 grand on handrails? If we're talking about the fact that somebody could slip and fall, we end up with a um, lawsuit. For a handrail, but we're going to spend money on a keyless entry so somebody can swipe something to walk in rather than use their key. Give us an example, Tom. <laughs> well, I've been after something to lock the restrooms up at night for a couple of years. At uh, just for example, and I I didn't get I have some pictures upstairs, but unfortunately, some of the one of the restrooms on Lakefront Park wasn't locked last fall or whatever, and uh, we went in there. Oh gosh, when we were sand getting ready for the floods, someone got in there and totally trashed the one restroom. I mean, they they did uh, graffiti on the this terrible graffiti on the walls and painted it and uh, did damage to the fixtures and um, and we do that. It happens a lot into our restrooms at night. We just have to figure a way to get our restrooms locked up at night. Last summer we did have you know I paid. Uh, some vol or not volunteer part-time people to go and lock them every night about eight or, eight or nine o'clock. Then toward the fall, all the kids went to school, and it was pretty hard to get full-time. We'd have to pay overtime to have people lock the restrooms up at night. I think at one time, I think the police used to lock them up at night. Now they're pretty busy. Uh, um, I think another time when the sewer plant used to have a night shift, I think at times they used to do it, but that's not the case anymore. I have two concerns. One is when you send somebody on to lock them up, they also go in to make sure there's nothing in there, to make sure the place is clean. You get some benefit about seeing somebody seeing sure. it. After a few weeks of it automatically locking and unlocking, you know, I think that there's, there seems to be a benefit to have somebody there. And when you add the two together for City Hall and the parks, you're looking at $24,000. I know the township of Hudson has it on their uh, ball fields, and they, they seem to love it. Now, whether you can go in, have our officers that are already working on the clock, go down that certain Check time, the doors, yeah. Check the door, take a peek in there. It locks automatically. They're out in a matter of not even five minutes. Okay. I mean, this is a, a long shot question, but what if there is someone in your restroom at night who is in distress? If you don't at least go in and check before you lock the door, what's the liability to the city? Uh, the way, the ones I checked into, you can always exit. You can always exit the uh, the room just that so you once it locks, you can't get back in. Okay. But so you take the part time out of there, the risk, the liability for that employee, and have a police officer that can actually take care of the incident if there was one. But yeah, it's not, not just here, up. right? It's not just yeah. down at Lakefront. It's, it's all the parks. It's all the, oh, it's all the parks. parks. Prospect, White Camp. Yeah. Now, now we have the pavilion out at White Camp, so we want to make sure that gets locked. Yeah. So it would be so. a thing where a computer would right. they'd just be locked. It wouldn't right. be a person going back. Right. The right. Whole, whole system would be locked at a certain time. City Hall, to rekey our city, was City Hall is about? Uh, it was, I, it was between the two Eric's. I think it was about $3,000 because we've got so many people with keys and we've got so many... You know, certain what, who can get in what door and whatever. So that was thought behind it. Also, it will allow us to limit access to certain parts of the building. You know, so that because right now I think there's a key that, in theory, I think EMTs could come in this front door and, you know, get into the rest of the building. That was the other option. The other thought behind it was I know we've had some, a lot of requests for meetings since the municipal building was closed or the meeting room upstairs. So that, that would allow us to open and close this building um, if someone wanted to come in and use it. And I, I know there's a risk of that. I mean, it would have to be a, an organization, obviously. That, But that was another thing that was mentioned <coughs> as part of it, because then the building could be opened. But Also but, gives you a pretty good tracking who's in and out of your Who's building. in and out of here at the building. So if there's something, if there's the computers are all messed with or whatever, you know who's in and out of the building. Anything else, Lee? 
Um, well, I still think there's some issue that, that we could resolve there. Um, if we're talking about some of these other things as being uh, whether it's valuable to have them in there at this point in time. And it sounds like obviously the, uh, the dryers in the bathrooms we're saying is going to save us 10 grand over two years or whatever. Well, I know we spend at least 5000 a year, if not more, on paper products okay. at all the parks. So Just because of the waste. Because mm -hmm. right. Plus and we have to pick it up. And you're going to have save, save on the other things, too. You're going to spend money on electricity, but you're also going to save money on, yeah. on handling. That was the question I had there as far as savings, keyless entry savings. Um, the other thing I don't see on here, and Tom can address this if you... Did he, or did he leave? No, he's here. Oh. We've talked a number of times about the stormwater sewer problems on Vine Street and the flooding in downtown Hudson. And which of these items, or are any of these items, going to cover the, the design work for redesigning the stormwater sewer for 5th Street, for Vine Street, for Locust Street? Nothing Not at this time. So we've, we've been talking about it for about five, six years now. My we still don't have a design. Go to Public Works and talk to them about it. I guess we, we get into a, go to the Public Works Committee. And we've been talking about it and I've asked a couple times to have it included. So we don't have a line item here, so obviously we can't budget the line item, but I think it's something we, we sure continue, this, continue you can, to overlook. We this can is the draft. As long as that, lo that last column there equals a million dollars, you guys can do whatever you want tonight, but we really, between here and council, we need to get this locked down because mm -hmm. we need to get going on the bonding because we're going to be the same boat we were last year. It'll be June and July. Right. Well, I, I don't, I, you know, and I understand so you, want to move That's why we're but, doing this. So you guys can move the right. money wherever you recommend. Tom, the general parks, park tables, playground equipment, playground equipment, does, what, what's your thought there? I, mean, I think if it came down, I think that's more of a want. The only thing that's a need was, uh, I think there's some bleachers up at Burton Field. It is, it's a, a I'm not code that we need to, they have to be a backstop and then side rails and something underneath the, the uh, so you, little kids can't fall underneath the steps. So I, I, didn't, I didn't highlight that one. So I, That's I, a kind of a need, that one. So uh, the other ones, if, if you so wanted to take some of them out, that's fine or all of it. That's your choice. I, is there anything in total disrepair that's not safe that needs to be replaced on those uh, tables, parks, benches, playground equipment? We just try to upgrade a little bit every year. So if we had even a few, you know, if you cut it even half, it'd be great. I, I think I would see some cutting there. Okay. The $4,000 I'd like to revisit with the water utility for water fountains. That's been talked about for some time. Yeah. But ultimately, I believe that money would come out of the parks, though. I mean, because they're... Well, they have to hook it up. They suggested paying for it at one point. I don't know if they hook... I don't know if they pay for getting the water to the fountain and then we, we purchase the fountain itself. I think that's the way it's been working. Okay. And the overlay and the boat launch, you know, like I say, you're just getting those out of other sources. And that's coming, you know, parking. that's coming out of the parking fund. Out of the parking so, fund. You know, if we don't want to do it, I guess we, we just leave the money in the parking fund. It's just, we just wanted everybody to look at all of our capital expenditures. Uh, there's no money that uh, is coming out of, for bonding purposes for that particular project. Well, what are you looking for out of this right now? Us to cut this stuff now? No, I, I think I, what, what we're looking for, if you want to cut something, but we need to approve a budget so we can get our streets fixed. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. I cut more of this stuff to get more on fixing the streets. Okay. Well, what's your recommendation? It's uh, Lee has talked about probably about a seven to ten million dollar project by the time we done get done with Vine Street for the uh, sewer, storm sewer, and street repairs. I think that's a. I, I think that's a. That's that'll be a biggie. It's a, it's a big overall. Yeah. It's a big project. It's going to be tied into our having to treat our our sewer. Yep. We're going to start uh, treating our stormwater sewer. But the thing I want to get back on the plate here is to get to a design together. What are we going to do? Are we going to double the, the capacity down 5th Street, which we've talked about, back out to Lake Malalu, or are we going to double the capacity down Vine Street? I mean, obviously, the 5th Street one isn't going to solve the problem on Locust Street, but we have the same problem many times a year. Yep. 
and we still don't have a design. Right. So I would like to have in this budget or figured out from Tom a budget to say what is it going to cost us to figure out how to solve the problem. Tom, do you remember when we uh, requested uh, to our previous uh, city engineer uh, that we, this was about four years ago we looked at this. Do you remember that at all? What that was, what the cost was on that? Uh, right at the moment. I guess we can look into that. Uh, and maybe uh, part of that money from 2012 we could use. Lee? Yep, and we could uh, make the decision if it's a big enough issue to touch, touch um, contingency, but I want to get yep. that on our capital plan. Or the other thing we could do is some of these park items, the benches and grills, if we cut all of those, those first three okay. in half. You know, that's 40,000, so we'd have 20,000 to start with for design. That's a lump and design. they can decide how to yeah. move 20,000. So we lower that by 20, mm -hmm. and then put 20 down for, should we call it the Vine Street project? I think it's good. Storm water. Water. Yep. Stormwater. Uh, Vine Street stormwater issues, flooding issues. But we have the streets we need to do too, Lee. Yep. I mean, that's those Vine Street needs to be redone. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, and, and it'll all be one project across 2nd Street, et cetera. So we'll call that a public works. So there's four, if you take those three there, there's 45,000. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do, do you care? Leave 20 there and put 25 in the, yeah. okay. okay. So we, we're going to take 25 and we're going to put it into uh, another line item. Another line item and we're going to call it uh, Vine Street Project. Vine Is Street Stormwater Project Design. Okay. Now we need to also talk with our um, the sewers, there's some sewer issues there too. There are. So we should get Jim involved in this. So. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay. But with that change, I guess I would recommend that we move it on to full council. Is that a motion? For approval, it is. Is there a second? Well, is that the only change we're making? Pardon? Is that the only motion? change we're making right now or what? That's, That's what we've got. That's we can't do more. Um, full council but we've got another right. yep <coughs> or second the other I mean that's fine the other yeah. option is is that you know if you want to get this finished and you want more discussion on this this could wait a couple weeks that's your call what could wait a couple oh. weeks closed. closed session yeah I understand that but I don't want to wait on the uh, budget right that's what I'm oh. saying okay was I mean I think that's a good starting point for us to discuss at full council okay Randy you okay with that yeah that's fine as long as yeah second Lee? Yes. Hasn't been. Okay. Any other discussion? So it's going forward with no recommend with that oh. one change, but with, with that no one formal change. recommendation. No, there is a formal yeah, recommendation. Yeah, formal to accept, to accept okay. it. Yeah, okay. with that change. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item 10, we're going to defer our table. Not table. What, what did you want to do, Randy, on that? Yeah, move the postponed. Postpone nice number e, uh, 11 or 10. Um, Indefinitely? No. <laughs> till what? Table till our next, next meeting. meeting. Till oh, next meeting. Okay. Second. Or do you need a motion on that or not? Yeah, yeah, I'll move to postpone till our next meeting and I'll have more information available. Okay. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, number 11, convenient to close session pursuant to 19 85 Wisconsin statute to review application to receive for finance officer position. Okay. Mm hmm. So roll call moved. vote. Need a motion. Yep, oh. we'll move. We go into closed session. Second. Roll call vote. Marset. Yes. Wyland. Yes. Bernard. Yes. Virtual. Yes. We'll go into into the mayor's office and do that, and then everybody else can stay here, so we don't have to.